Thank you to Soccer Co. and Tokyo Treat for sponsoring today's video. Hi guys, welcome back to another video. So today, as you can tell probably from the title of the video, there has been like an anime or a manga that I've always wanted to draw fan art for, but I've never really done it justice. And I think I've only done fan art of it once. So let's take a look at my sketchbook right here. I'll show kind of more of a clearer image, but I did a little bit of thumbnailing and just sketching out what I wanted today's illustration to look like. Now, I don't think it's very evident who the person I'm gonna be drawing today, unless you've been keeping up with my Instagram stories. But I wanted to draw fan art for Natsume Yujin Cho. So if you guys are not familiar with this series, I highly, highly, highly recommend the series. It's a wonderful anime, or if you wanna read it, feel free to do that. But this anime has been one of my favorites ever since I've watched it back during like my university days. And like I said, I've done a fan art of this before in the past and I even made a video of it so I'll link it in the description if you're curious where I redrew the I believe the first volume manga cover so I drew it in my style and I did it in paint tool sai but looking back I don't think I did it justice so let's do fan art of Natsume today and I'll give you like a very brief rundown of Natsume without being spoilery so I won't talk about the series too much in depth so I'll keep everything quite vague if anything. But before we get to that, so process wise, I kind of followed very closely to the thumbnail that I initially had in my sketchbook. Also, I decided to leave in some of the sounds from my iPad because I decided to record with the mic on this time uh, because some people were asking for me to include the sounds again. And it's a little bit harder for me to always include the sounds because I record at odd times in the day. And if there's people walking around and talking, I usually like shut off the audio on my mic or like I don't allow my mic to pick up the audio. So it's not gonna be always the case where I can include the mic sounds from the scratching and scratching from my pencil to the iPad. So I do apologize that it's not gonna be super consistent, but if I can, I'll try to leave in the pencil sounds. But if it's too distracting alongside with the music, do let me know and I'll try to find a balance that's a little bit more suitable or I'll kind of pick certain videos to allow the sound versus music and whatever <laughs> works kind of like the best. But like I mentioned, I followed my sketch in my sketchbook pretty closely in terms of how I was blocking out the composition and I'm placing Natsume, who is our main character, also in the anime and manga, plus the person who I'm going to be drawing today. But I'm also drawing his... I don't know how to refer to him. His companion, I guess? But we're going to be calling him Nyanko Sensei, so uh, if you want more context, just please look up the story and stuff. But basically, uh, this is kind of more of a supernatural kind of slice of life anime, but it's heavily on like, I guess like slice of life and the character growing to accept themselves alongside with other people, accepting that he's different, but they all, you know, they learn to love and adore him and all this stuff. And it's just kind of like a very wholesome story for the most part but it does have supernatural where Natsume who is our main character can see and communicate with yokai and he has kind of a new goal upon finding I guess like I should have explained the English title for the manga so it's called Natsume Yujincho but it's actually called Natsume's book of friends and it'll make a little bit more sense so basically he kind of has a goal of releasing the names from this book and giving them back to the yokai and i don't know if this is spoilers so his grandmother could also see and deal with yokai and she would challenge these yokais to i guess like a fight of some sort and if she wins she gets to know the yokai's name and the name of the yokai gets to be put into this book of friends. So Natsume then receives this book because I guess like he finds it. I don't remember entirely because it's been a while since I've watched the series, but I've loved the series like a lot. So I'm probably going to rewatch it so I can catch myself back up. There is a reason why I'm drawing this now versus like from before. 
One is probably because like skill set wise, I would not have thought that I would be able to draw fan art that I think well depicts the kind of like demeanor of Natsume and the vibe of kind of like the atmosphere and stuff. So I really do end up really, really, really liking today's illustration and I plan to do another one in the future as well with a different aesthetic, which I'll talk about once we get to the coloring stage. But it has been announced this year that Natsume season seven is going to be released in fall of this year, which I'm super excited about. So I wanted to do fan art for it just because I've been in this like hyped headspace right now where I did like three sketchbook spreads in my sketchbook of just drawing Natsume and trying to figure out compositions for an illustration and future illustrations as well. But hopefully that gives you a little bit of context about like the story. But I highly recommend if you're a person who likes slice of life animes, and I do think Natsume is a little bit on the slower paced side alongside with many episodes. So it's definitely an anime that I find like very relaxing. So yeah, I highly recommend it. Give it a shot if you are interested and yeah. But for now, I'm going to be finishing up the sketch very shortly here. So before we get to coloring the background, let's talk about today's sponsor, Tokyo Tree and Sakura Co. We are finally into spring and what's a better way to celebrate it with Sakura themed snacks? Experience Japan from the comfort of your own home with their beautifully packed snack boxes. This month has even more Sakura themed snacks. Tokyo Treat is a monthly pop Japanese snack subscription box with 20 of the latest exclusive limited edition and seasonal flavored Japanese snacks that are only available in Japan for a limited time. This includes a full size drink, an exclusive ramen, and many Sakura flavored snacks this time around. I feel like Hanami season is usually depicted in the day with bright Sakura blossoms. But the Yozakura, which is Japan's night blossoms, kind of has a different atmosphere with the sakura flowers and lanterns, which kind of creates a festive vibe. While Sakura Co. is an authentic Japanese snack subscription box, Sakura Co. supports local Japanese snack makers, and each box comes with 20 traditional, authentic, and artisan Japanese snacks, but also includes Japanese teas and a special Japanese tableware. With a similar theme of the Yozakura, there are even more Sakura snacks that are included in this month's box, but the tableware that is included in this month's box is the Sakura glass. It has this beautiful pink Sakura design on it, and it's just a, such a cute size, perfect for just a small drink. So both boxes come with a 24 page cultural guide and the booklet includes tidbits of information on each of the snacks in the box. It also talks about different locations, traditions, and any information revolving around the box's theme for that month. Also includes the allergen information, ingredients, and if the snack is vegetarian friendly or not. Each month has a different theme, meaning that you get to try out a whole new selection of new treats and snacks every month. For example, Tokyo Treats box theme for the month of April is the Sakura Matsuri, while Sakura Ko's theme is a night of Sakura. Before I talk about the snacks, let's check out this month's tea from Sakura Ko. The tea from this month's box is actually a blueberry hibiscus tea, which I kind of thought I've tried this one before, but I actually had a peach hibiscus tea from before. So this one has been kind of my favorite out of like fruit flavored teas, which I'm usually not too fond of, but I actually liked it so much so that I have been trying to get myself even more of this particular flavor, so hopefully I can find it. While the tea was brewing, I had a taste test of a few snacks. So from the Tokyo Treat box, I will always try the Kit Kat as it's usually a new flavor that I have not tried before. So this time it is the strawberry flavored one. And it also has white chocolate, which matches really well with the strawberry flavor. I didn't really show this, but throughout some of the days that I was you know, tasting some of the snacks and working, I would usually pop in one of the strawberry yogurt candies while I worked. Also, the sakura karinto were really nice and crisp and felt like kind of like mini fried donuts, which were really lovely to eat alongside with the tea. For Sakura Co, besides this tea being so freaking delightful and delicious, I really enjoyed the Sakura Mochi, which were actually not too sweet and just had a nice, subtle, delicate Sakura flavor. The Sakura Cashew Nuts were also really tasty, and my brother, who's not really a fan of cashews, actually really enjoyed it too. But the cherry blossoms yokan had more of a stronger flavor with the white bean taste, but I also really like this kind of more traditional kind of sweet as well. 
So if you would like to get a box for yourself or want to give these as a lovely gift to family or friends, then check out the links in the description and get your boxes today. Thank you again to Soccer Co. and Tokyo Treat for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to coloring and I actually feel a little bit inspired by the covers of today's boxes. So let's get to coloring. So as stated before, I actually wanted to kind of change up what I was going to do for my color scheme. So from the Soccer Co. and Tokyo Treat box, they have these little booklets and I really like the aesthetic of the kind of like Yozakura or like the Night Blossom aesthetic. So initially, I was actually going to do a much brighter and lighter aesthetic, which I'm going to save that for a future illustration because I would love to do two different aesthetics for the drawings that I want to do for Natsumi fan art. But for today's session, I am going to be keeping kind of with like the night sky. I'm going to do a lot of like blues, deeper purples, a little bit of violet and pink here and there. And I am going to be including a lot of flowers where I can because I guess like more recently, especially with the Don Hung piece, and I believe there's one more. I think the Kaisen piece as well that I did previously. I've been really enjoying just playing around with a little bit of the, the depth alongside with the flowers and picking and choosing where I'm going to be rendering a lot and where I'm rendering a little bit, even though I know it's a bit of a crutch sometimes when I do this, but sooner or later I will get out of that kind of phase. But I do like it in general as an aesthetic for a lot of my pieces. So I'm probably going to continue doing it for a few other illustrations, but I will try my best to either do more where I'm going to rely less on gauge and blur or I'll change up the aesthetic to be something else. But I think you guys are pretty familiar that I really enjoy including some kind of floral or foliage aspect into some of my illustrations and drawings just because that's kind of like where my current interests kind of lie in terms of like aesthetics or color palettes or I don't know, like generally even like compositions and stuff, I find it easier to think of it accompanied with some kind of like floral aspect. <laughs> but before we stray too far, so I ended up adding a moon into the background similar to the initial thumbnail that I had in my sketchbook. So that was not something new, but I was going to do more of like white and blue aesthetic and keeping things a little bit more airier and a little bit hazier. But for this one, because it had more of kind of like intense color. I did want to make the moon not like pure white, even though maybe it would have fit nicely. I also think the lighting that I have currently with my camera to my iPad is not doing the colors justice, but you're gonna see a little bit later that the colors are gonna look blown out. So if you're really interested on what the illustration is gonna look at the very end, please wait until like the actual finished time lapse portion. And usually I put the finished illustration at the end as well, so you can see a little bit more accurate colors on your own screen rather than being at the mercy of me not being able to control my camera colors or the gain on my camera. But um, in terms of the process, so after I did the background, I wanted to include the flowers kind of, I don't want to say last minute, but I did not have like a general direction on how I wanted to include the foliage this time. So like I said, I'm doing it very similar how I did the previous Don Hung piece and the one that I did at Kaisen a while back. That's kind of like the white and green composition or illustration. So for this one, I decided to quickly throw in a bunch of sakura blossoms and draw them for the background. Then I will draw some larger ones for the sakura blossoms that are going to be close up. And most likely I am going to gauge and blur these so that they create a little bit more depth. And this way I find it a little bit easier for me to also frame the figure in a way. So without making it, or at least I'm hoping it won't make it look too, too crowded, I like to frame the bottom of the pieces sometimes with foliage where you can kind of direct your eyes a little bit more upwards and towards the figure in this case, so that I'm kind of like circling the figure in a way that it treats the flowers and foliage as a frame. So. After that, I decided to quickly fill in the colors and you might have seen that more recently I've been filling in both the figures color alongside with any kind of like background elements instead of like me manually coloring 
with like a brush and then drop the color into the I don't even know what I'm saying basically it's like using the bucket fill tool and coloring it that way so I would usually do kind of like an outline of the silhouette of the area that I'm trying to fill and either with a larger brush I'll fill in the area or I will use the color drop and fill in the area but I found it a lot easier to just use the lasso tool and the color fill option on it to fill in the areas because it's a lot quicker I find I leave little gaps and the lines are just a little bit more sharper so I have a little bit less of those faded soft edges near the edges of my sketch so it just makes it a little bit easier for me to keep everything contained and clean so after that I filled in the base with kind of like a dark yellowy orange color then we're going to alpha lock that basic color and then I'm going to do all my base colors my rough colors alongside with the majority of shading and the lighting so currently what I'm doing is that I tend to do the face first and then we'll kind of like branch our way out. So I'll do the eyes next, usually the hair, I'll do the clothing, any accessories. In this case, I guess Nyanko Sensei is not exactly an accessory, but I do end up coloring him last. But this makes it a lot easier for me to stay within my initial color blocking of that yellowy orange color because once you alpha lock it, your pixels are kind of just like all locked so you can't go out anywhere that isn't already placed with a color so it just makes cleanup a little bit less of a hassle and I used to not do this in the past and it was definitely time consuming to keep your edges like a lot cleaner or if you want to do cleanup after it's just very time consuming anyways so in terms of like lighting and coloring and shading for this particular piece so even though i do have the background set out for this particular piece i am not taking a lot of consideration of the lighting for now so he is going to be more or less backlit backlit yeah i guess it's backlit even though his back is towards us but i'm going to be relying on using multiply and another blend mode which is going to be add to do my shade shadows and highlights without having to fuss with the colors too too much so i'm trying to keep in mind some of the colors that i'm including so if there's background colors i'll try to include it into the piece like skin tone sometimes i pop that into the clothing some of the clothing colors i pop that back in the skin tone or into the hair so that we have a little bit more of a cohesive color palette but like i said i'm going to be relying on multiply and add to kind of like fix the lighting and the color temperature. I was going to do an overlay layer, but because I want to make the entire piece a little bit darker so that Natsume feels like he fits into the background appropriately, I didn't really want to just use overlay. So for the most part, multiply to pop Natsume back into the correct lighting, I guess. And then after that, we'll use our add blend mode layer to do simple rim lighting and then after that i'll merge everything <laughs> i did have a little bit of a hard time thinking on what kind of outfit to give him so he's usually in a standard kind of a school uniform i guess but it's basically kind of like black trousers I think it's just like simple school shoes or like loafers and then he has like a white short sleeve button up shirt and I didn't really want to keep that I guess like vibe for this particular piece and he does have other outfits and I remember seeing this one so luckily I was able to find a reference there was another one that I also liked but his I don't know what specifically this is called. It's like the outer portion of your kimono. So I'm not sure if the outer layer has a specific name, but I do like this particular one because it's dark on the inside of like where his shirt would be and then kind of like a jacket-ish outer layer. It's a lighter aesthetic. So I feel like it balances out the piece a little bit better because my other option would have been a lighter inside. Uh, portion and a darker outside portion which I feel like he would have gotten lost too easily so that's kind of like the choice on why I did this one alongside with I like the pattern for this which you will see a little bit later so yeah so I'm already doing the lighting I popped in the multiply layer with kind of a darker blue now because like I said my iPad lighting with like my, my filming setup was kind of making everything look a lot darker than it actually is and it kind of looks a little bit more 
muted, but you'll see a little bit later when the gain is up and all my exposure and everything that it's a lot brighter and a little bit more vibrant, if anything, because I tend to pick vibrant colors when I do my rendering and like my initial lay down of like my shadows and my highlights and stuff just because I do like to play around with color in a very subtle way in a sense. But before I can get into actually doing the rendering for Natsume, I wanted to do the rendering for the background flowers. Now, we are on night two because I was not able to finish this all in one setting. So the lighting has changed and you can see that a lot of these lighter flowers are now very overexposed. So I do apologize that this might become blinding. I hope you're not watching in a dark room. Please turn on some kind of light or dim your screen because I don't want to accidentally flashbang you guys with my uh, exposure. So. For the flowers, I did want to make sure that I spent a good amount of time on these particular flowers. So they're kind of behind Natsume, but they're not super far away in terms of how I want to position them into the composition. Meaning that I did not have plans to blur like a good chunk of it. So there are some portions where I'm gonna copy and paste and blur them just to create a little bit more depth and kind of to make the flowers seem a little bit more full. But for the most part, the ones that are not like going to be blurred and in shadow, I am gonna spend a lot of time trying my best to render them so that they appear in focus and not too fuzzy. And I don't know why, I just don't really like how I render flowers in Procreate. I feel like they always look a little bit plasticky. So maybe I just need to do a little bit more of like delicate, kind of like delicate flower rendering studies maybe in the future so that I won't hate my flowers in every drawing that I do on Procreate. Um, but I went ahead and skipped ahead to the rendering portion of Natsume, which I feel like is pretty straightforward in terms of my process since I majority of the time do show the rendering portion of whenever I draw a character. So I am starting off with the eyes and usually the features of the face before we move on to I guess like the rest of his face, the hair, and then we'll move down the body and go towards the clothing and then any accessories, companions, anything of that sort will be kind of last because I like drawing the face the most. So the faster that I can finish it and kind of like pre-approve it in my brain, then the better because otherwise I would probably want to scrap it. But if I scrapped it at this point, that's several hours just down the drain. So for the most part, try to get the face out of the way for myself so that I can move on with the rest of the piece and kind of focus my energy there instead of having gripes with the face every time I have to look at it. But hopefully with like this particular camera, exposure and color range wise i don't know what i'm saying but basically hopefully natsume kind of looks a little bit less dull compared to the previous footage so i think i ended up making it slightly vibrant and i made the multiply layer a little bit less opaque so i changed the opacity to be a little bit more transparent so that he doesn't get too dark in a way because i know for a fact that if you're backlit, you're not going to be able to see a lot of the details in the person because they're going to be extremely dark because of the lighting is behind you and your front portion, I guess, is not going to be lit up. So it's just like you're inherently going to lose a lot of detail because it's just darker due to the lighting. So I didn't really want to do that because like I said, Natsume is kind of like the the focal point of the entire piece but also you get to have a little bit of leeway in terms of like creative liberties so i don't really care if it's like not super accurate to making him be fully lit properly by the lighting i rather have his face be seen if anything so hopefully people aren't too confused on like if the lighting is supposed to be dark why isn't he kind of like in the dark a little bit more with stronger lighting and maybe like the rim lighting doesn't make sense it's just take some creative liberties and I also I don't think a lot of the things I draw anyways is very realistically accurate so I'm not going to be nitpicking about it too too much as long as I think it fits for the most part and it's not too too off, I guess, then I'm satisfied with it. 
Another thing I wanted to include is an extra kind of like thing of fabric in the front, which I'm also going to be blurring just to create a little bit more depth because the amount of fabric that I had for I don't know if this is his kimono or if it's like a haori, but basically I wanted more fabric to come into the front to give it a little bit more of a sense of movement, which I don't think it did what I wanted it to do, but I'll be able to create a little bit of more of that movement a little bit later and you'll see it because I tend to add some final little details and touches that I usually do for a floral piece, which is like flower petals. Sometimes I do like dust particles collecting or like not collecting catching the light if anything so yeah i did kind of wish that i spent a little bit more time on parts of the fabric because the way how i did the fabric was very simple and it doesn't really make sense in terms of how it bunches up and i usually have a fun time kind of rendering either like thicker fabric that's a little bit chunkier and has a lot of volume or kind of like that crispier thin fabric and I kind of wish I just included more of those folds and allowed myself to play around with the shapes rather than having this, this weird stack of fabric that kind of pinches in one area. It just feels a little bit stiff and doesn't feel like it flows correctly in terms of it pulling backwards and his arms being in front of him. So. Yeah, it's just something that I would like to maybe experiment a little bit more in the next piece that I would like to do. Mm. So, I didn't really talk about the second piece that I wanted to do, and I, it's not going to be included in this video because it's not even drawn at all. It's not even sketched out. I didn't really plan out the thumbnailing process either too, too much. But I want to talk about it because in kind of like comparison with this one, I kind of want it to be more of a contrasting piece in terms of aesthetic. So I want something to be a little bit more simple and less busy, plus a lighter aesthetic. And the thing I want to do is kind of like make it majority, probably like white and like a lot of pastel softer colors, but have either very subtle patterning of like chrysanthemums and flowers in the background because there is some official art and hopefully I'll remember to put it into the video. If not, uh, you can scream at me in the comments, <laughs> but I remember seeing some official art where there's kind of like depictions of kind of like chrysanthemums and they kind of frame the piece as well. And I think it'd be fun to do that in a very graphic kind of line art kind of way. And I used to do these from like pieces that I did in university where I did a lot of um, kind of like Chinese patterning onto I guess like portraitures of like models alongside with myself and like a few people that I knew and I would do these graphic kind of solid filled color detailed patterning and it, I just like the contrast between something that's fully rendered and like these flat graphic styled stuff details and stuff like that. I don't know if it makes sense. Also, my brain's like fried right now. <laughs> so hopefully I will be able to do that piece and maybe you'll see it in the future. I'm not too sure if I'm, if I'm gonna do it for a video, but yeah, process wise. So the thing that was gonna help me create a little bit of movement for this piece was the petals. So I tried to keep the petals in a circular motion so that it doesn't cut right in front of Natsume's face alongside with Nyanko sensei. So for the most part, you guys are not gonna see too too much of the background details as closely because my iPad is very blown out at the moment. So part of the moon plus the clouds are gonna look super, super white. And that is not what it actually looks like. It's a little bit more yellowy and a little bit warmer. But for the most part, I actually really enjoyed this piece. I think it's a little bit busy. So I do regret having too much uh, clouds in the background. I think a simpler background would have worked nicely alongside with the flowers. But for the most part, I enjoyed this piece. I enjoyed working on this piece and I'm super, super, super excited for season seven of Natsume Yujin Show in fall this year. So hopefully you guys enjoyed watching this process and I'll talk to you guys next time in the next video. Bye.